Howdy folks, it's Friday night, so that means it's time for beers and photos. Thank you to everyone who sent messages through the week and submitted photos. Uh, it's been really fun, this little process with everyone, so thanks for joining us. I hope you had a great week. Um, I can see Juan is in the room, who's acting as an admin, and there'll be some others popping in. <laughs> you okay? popping in soon, so um, if you have some questions, then please fire away. They'll um, bring them to my attention if I miss them. Uh, this week we're looking at your reflections photos. Now, I chose out 50 because we had so many entered, it would just become insufferably long or it's too brief to be of any use. So I thought 50 is probably a good number. If um, someone can shoot me a message to let me know that everything is looking and sounding good, I would appreciate it. And we can jump into this. Nice to see everyone. Messages are coming through. That's a great sign. So uh, do let me know how it's tracking. I'm still getting the kinks out of this whole system, but we did a couple of trials earlier today and fingers crossed everything is looking and sounding fantastic. First, like music, no? Um, dun, dun, dun. First drink I'm going to open is for my wife. This is one that actually I had the other week when I had a couple of Japanese ones on and it was great. And my wife doesn't drink a lot of beer, but she doesn't mind some. So this is a Koshikari Echigo beer. And I really, really liked it last time. Hi Cliff, hi Richie, hi Christopher, Simon, Sean, Thomas, Tom's there. Great. Now, for your info, Tom, we had chatted about this during the week. Um, it does seem that running OBS in studio mode makes a big difference on the number of frames that it's able to put out. My wife, for you, I'm sorry, I can't get up and bring it to you. Uh, excuse the Stella glass, please enjoy. You're okay. Okay, and for myself, I chose out a Trappist Rofor, authentic Trappist product from Belgium. This is the six. Don't exactly know what it all means, but I know there's a bunch of different varieties and I know this is the wrong cup, so apologies. And then I got a Hit Hitachino Nest White Ale, which I really, really like. So let's get this one open and then let's take a look at the first of our pictures. I will jump straight in and look at the some pictures, then we'll jump out, look at questions that you guys have, and we'll go from there. Okay, not too, 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 too foamy on this guy. Just give that a second to settle. Now, here we go. Now, apologies for my squinting because the monitor is in front of the camera, but it's a little distance away from my old eyes. Um, this is from Alan Benj something. <coughs> big ears. I never noticed that chimps have such big ears. Um, it looks like a photo taken in the long, long ago when we could leave the house and that was so long ago that we're all using film, right? Cheers to everyone at home. Cheers, Katie. Yeah, yeah cheers. 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 Enjoy. Okay, so I like this one. I quite like that, you know, we're only seeing the profile of the animal in real life, but in the reflection, we're actually seeing both the eyes. So that little bit of a different perspective, I think the reflection does actually add something. I think that's a good point for this. Just having a reflection is maybe neat, but having it add something to the picture is a little bit more difficult. So either it gives us some more information or a different perspective or adds some humor or something or something, I think is a good thing. This one from Alanu, Atanu. Um, looks like sunrise, 
somewhere hot and humid. Um, look, it's nice. I think um, it's basically just a really nice still reflection. The gangway or whatever it is on the bottom right of the image is kind of distracting. Um, maybe, you know, it works fine, but I think maybe being a little bit lower to the ground, maybe going slightly longer lens and getting it in more on the building through to the, the edge of the trees just past the sun uh, could make it a stronger composition. Uh, this one from Bill Murphy. Hi, Bill. Cheers. Hope you're well down in Miami. Oh, in Florida anyway. Um, so, some kind of heron, I guess. Kind of looks like it could be the one that was uh, hanging out in Central Park not too long ago. So the bird is beautiful and sharp. The, you know, unfortunately, so is the background and that's not very pretty. It almost looks flash lit. The the sun must have been really intense at that time of day. I like that the eye, as it's reflected in the water, we get a little double take, but the, the main part of it is nice and sharp. Um, Bjorn Borhofer. Oh, and I have to say, so I didn't get all of the shots that were entered. And as it says on the website, I'm sorry, this takes a fair bit of time, even for a casual thing to put together. So people submitting shots and not renaming them or sending them in at this tiny little size or sending in half a dozen photos, I can't include them. I, you know, just if you can rename them, that would be great. And do keep checking mattgranger.com forward slash live. That's where I'll be updating what I need you to do for submission. Um, we're hoping to get a different method of doing it soon. So once that is updated, the info will be there too. So this is another one where it's a nice, crisp, incredibly still water reflection, but I don't know that it actually adds much to it. I think the exposure on the water is actually better than the exposure in real life because the, some of the lights on the building are kind of blown out on the building. Um, you know, it's, it's fine, it works, but I don't know that it's actually that much more interesting than just getting the building. Maybe doing it as a portrait so it's all right in, bam, just on the building and the reflected building, but without, you know, the left of frame really adds nothing. The right kind of does, but it's not strong. Uh, although there is a couple of people sitting in there that's kind of interesting. Might be a good one to explore a really high res of. Blake Perry. Well, that's just charming. <laughs> it's another one where it's, it doesn't really add a whole lot of information. Maybe that's not the right way of looking at it, but I do like that the horizon line is not perfectly central. Um, and it does evoke the atmosphere, you know, being by the lake or the river with the fog early morning before it's all burned off the you know, the reflection, I just feel it, it really does add to the mood of the overall shot. Okay, um, this one from Bradley. So it's not, uh, you know, pin, well, it's actually pretty good on the guy. Um, it's, I think it's certainly, uh, the risk when you're doing stuff like this or water drop shots or these things that got popular in the last couple of years and everyone has done it now is how do you make your shot stand out? So here the addition of the reflection I think really does lift it above the thousands of cotton wool shots that we see. So nicely done. This one from Chris Harrison. It's quite mesmerizing and beautiful, huh? It's interesting, a shot like this really doesn't need to be perfectly straight up and down. It does work here. Um, the water droplet is beautiful, but you do also wonder how some of the, and I hopefully we'll have some in the selection, that haven't just got a perfect, you know, top and bottom reflection that we've got some other, you know, separating line, but that's a beautiful shot. Okay, I'll take a look at three more and then we'll jump out and answer some questions. This one from Chris Payden. I wonder, was this all taken in, yeah, I guess it was all in the one shot. Um, the interesting thing with the reflection, which um, is kind of counterintuitive. So you'll note 
her back is out, her front is out, her front in the mirror is in, but then the actual mirror itself is out. How is that? You would think that like, you could think that the person's image, it's like a painting that they're looking at. So it's their, their image is on the surface of the glass. So if you're focused on the glass, the frame of the mirror should be in as well, but that's not actually how it works. When you're figuring out your depth of field on a reflection, you take a photo, you measure the distance, let's say 10 foot from my camera to the mirror, and then from the mirror back to her is three foot, that means the total focal distance is actually 13 feet, which means whatever is behind the mirror that's the same distance away as she is in front, like this tree over here, it's going to be in sharp focus, not her back, because that's only, whatever, seven foot away rather than the 13. So it's kind of a trippy effect, huh? Nice work. Um, I see some good questions coming in, but I'll focus and I'll come back to that in a second. Christian. Beautiful time of night. You've balanced it really well with the ambient light and the city lights. Um, I see there, you know, there's a bit of muck in the water here, but I do wonder if the including the bridge and having it as a landscape might have been a nice composition. But let us know where you could take that one. Have a look at one more here and then we'll jump and have a look at some questions. This one from Christoph van der Osten, I think it is. Um, wow, I, it looks like Thai monks doing uh, some kind of a lantern ritual uh, by the water. I don't know what this was or what the context was. Um, it's difficult with this huge dynamic range of total blacks up here in the top corner through to the bright lanterns. But I would like to see the mid-tones pushed a little bit um, to bring them up at, as it is. Or, or how would we do it? No, we want the reflection. It's a tricky one. You wouldn't want to overdo it with brightening the people up, but I feel like bringing them up a little, and maybe we could just come in a little bit closer on them, get rid of the right-hand side, those few guys, and just kind of bring it in. I can't really do a crop in viewer here, but something a little bit like that, so that we see those guys in the foreground more clearly than we do when it's out on the wider shot. So let's jump back and take a look at the questions we have. Hi. So, um, questions, questions. Uh, Joe Welt around gear all day, how I miss it right now. Um, but taking around two full-size cameras on a double black rapid, it's, I would never go back to using a normal neck strap that comes with a camera. The only exception would be like a little rangefinder, and even then I do it on kind of a over the shoulder way, not just around the neck. Um, and so Black Rapid, this is one of the adapters. This, by the way, is the Tamron 70 to 180 that I've got here on loan. Um, so you can have this one, which then you just hang the camera, or I have, I don't know if the other camera I have here has it on, but the one that I'm filming with does, you can adapt it to a tripod plate. So then you can take, put it on the tripod, shoot with it, take it off, and then be able to go straight to a black rapid without having to change things around. Um, am I ever going to come to Trinidad and Tobago? I would love to. I, it's not on my travel plans right now though. Uh, Mavan4, when are you going mirrorless dot 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 with Nikon? No plans. I have um, Nikon DSLRs, like a rangefinder, a Sony A7R4, and an A9 on loan. That's, I don't really have any gaps in my requirements right now. I have some lust objects. That would actually be a cool uh, conversation, you know, depending on what circles you're in. Um, Oh, the camera's just a tool, it doesn't matter, blah, blah, blah. In a way, it's true, and you can get the job done with every, with anything. But that doesn't mean you can't like something just because you like it or it's nice to use, right? So 
if budget, well, let's make it uh, split it. If you could save up for a year and get whatever you want, what would your dream camera be? And if we just forgot about prices so you can spend $100,000 if you want to, what would be your absolute ultimate camera system for the kind of thing that you're shooting? There's no point saying you want to get a phase one 150 megapixel camera to shoot indoor volleyball or something. But, you know, for what you're shooting, what would be your best one? And then if the mods can pick out some answers, I'll um, read them out. Um, two more questions. Do you use textures in your work and do you take your own if you do? Occasionally I'm getting a little bit more into adding textures, doing sky replacements, that kind of thing now that the software is getting so much more intelligent and it can actually look really good without me having to take a short course to learn how to actually do it. It is something that I consider, but yeah, I generally try to use my own uh, or custom skies, textures, that kind of thing, rather than just the out of the box ones. Uh, John Colton, when is the fresh ramen going to arrive at your apartment when your payment hits my account? What more can I say? Um, so let me know about your lust have cameras and let's jump back into these pictures. And of course, you know, this is meant to be a collaborative community experience. So as I'm doing the photo feedback, please do feel free to give your thoughts on the pictures in case the person who shot it is here as well. Maybe they're not actively chatting, but it's still nice to give feedback. Uh, because I'm going out to you guys in 4K, even though you can probably only see it in 1440, I have to have a bit of a lag, unfortunately. So your typing comes up about 10 minute, 10 seconds or 20 seconds after I've actually said it. So, you know, apologies if I'm, that's why I have people getting the questions to me so I don't miss them. Okay, so go back to this shot. Next shot from Christianinu. Uh, oh, it looks like some, what's that designer? Um, Vivian Westwood earrings. Um, I quite like it. It's, it's a funny one. The, it looks like a sticker. Uh, I feel like that would be a really cool piece to be wearing on your eye if it were made out of something durable or more, you know, I don't know, more craft. And what's going on? We've got a weird little reflection going on there. Oh no, that's just the sticker. I thought it was like one of those double mirrors that, ooh, maybe it was a spy mirror or something. Um, again, I quite like it. We're seeing the whole picture from the mirror, like we're seeing the real her. And in the main image, we're just seeing just her earring, basically. Okay, so this is obviously a really low res image from Dave Beyer. So this is another one where it's just basically a, uh, it's a really nice, smooth, not moving water. So, you know, it is what it is. Let me just zoom it in a little bit. It's probably going to lose quality. But um, the interesting thing, though, is it looks like this is on a road and that's melted snow. So that's kind of cool in itself. Hello. Can I change images, please? Okay. Uh, Dave Putzia and... Thanks for entering again, Dave. I know you've entered some great ones recently. Uh, from memory, you shot this in a studio, trying to sim like to give the impression of it being a window on a rainy day. I think it works well. Um, again, it's interesting how the, um, I feel like you're getting more emotion from the reflection than from the actual her. Here's one where I actually wonder if having more of the lead side of her face covered by hair would actually work better here. So it's not by far the brightest part of the image. Could also be that you've brightened and softened her skin, which is making it really pop. But for me, all of the interest is in here, in the reflection, basically, in this part. But nice one. Oh, <laughs> that's kind of like the first image we saw of the chimp. Um, it's cute. I don't know if he saw a a cute wildlife out the window or something. It looks like it's on a bus maybe, um, or a train. 
Uh, I mean, it, it's both cute and funny, but I don't love the completely central composition. I get that that may be where the focus point is, but even just cropping a bit off the right so that it moves it all a little off center or maybe probably to the right and to the left, bringing them both up into the corner a bit, I think would help the composition a little. So oh, that's too far, but you know, something, oh, something like that. Okay. Preview is not the best software to be doing this in. Let me just slide over. So you, there we go. Okay, so this one from Eric Bowden. Thanks for your entry. I've seen the name around a lot. Thank you for all your interaction with the channel. Um, it's, uh, it, you know, it's a real tight close-up. You can see all of the little imperfections in the metal and whatnot. Um, here's one, so we didn't have a, every shot being a top to bottom reflection. This is one that could have been oriented in any direction and he's gone for uh, vertical. Um, I think it's just the graphic thing, it's interesting. Again, I would probably shift it off being centrally composed though. Uh, so I just saw one is in the laying down the law about vague gear questions. If you can ask a pointed gear question uh, that's brief but you know specific, I'll be happy to answer it. Like I own the A7 III, I'm looking to get the A7R4 and I want to know is this particular feature better? Then if I've compared the two, I'll be happy to answer that. But just saying should I buy the A7R4, that I really can't make a meaningful answer other than I did, and I like it. Eugene Hernandez. Um, so here we're seeing the reflections on the car windscreens and hoods of Radio City Music Hall. Uh, oh, Lenny Kravitz was playing, I wonder when this was, maybe last year. Um, I like it, it's a real New York City, you know, I can see Manhattan out there and there's hardly any cars driving around, it feels like we're the ones on an island. It feels like it's so far away, even though it's right there. So extra points for nostalgia for me. This one from Frank. Again, so there's so many that are, well, it's not quite centrally composed, but um, let's see. Oh, you guys are seeing my um, chat notifications pop up <laughs> on the shot there. Uh, one is sending me through the questions on my phone so then I can not miss them. Um, I like it, but it it's very low detail. Um, I don't know what's going on there. It's, yeah, I don't know what's going on there. It's like it was from a much, much lower res file or something. Uh, am I zoomed in on that? Nope, that's the whole shot. Um, from Gary Martin. Well, it's, a, it's an interesting composition. I was saying about not having everything centrally composed. Um, now, the, yeah, I wonder if, if you had focused through and then had the reflection in focus, we might have a more pervasive depth of field that would give a lot more of the shot in focus because it would bring the the distance, you know, closer to getting everything in focus. Um, I'll give you this, I've never seen a shot quite like that. I've never seen that perspective. And I think of the different shots, if you're trying to get a bum reflected, that's probably the most tasteful one. So nicely done. Gary Waltney, let's um, do two more and we'll jump back to the questions. Um, interesting one. So the rocks in the foreground do nicely fill the empty space that the sky is giving us in the reflections in the water. And then I reckon you could even crop uh, like that so we're hardly getting any of the rocks because the, the reflections in the water tell us what the rocks are above, you know, in the distance. So that kind of gives us all of the information and brings us in nice and close, but I like it. 
Uh, this one from Ian Knight. I feel like I've seen this before. Did you submit this to one of my other competitions in the past? I really feel like I've seen this or a variation on this before. It could also be that my friend Nat in the UK has taken some shots. Is this a statue somewhere in the UK? Um, yeah, I mean, I like it. And it doubles down on the theme of reflection because it also, you know, someone staring out to the ocean makes you think about someone thinking about their life as well. So you get that double meaning of reflection. I'm surprised actually, we haven't so far had too many that were about self-reflection or thinking about things rather than literal reflections. Um, so, someone's saying, what art do we have in our apartment? We have, I wouldn't say we're art collectors by any means, but on our travels, we've picked up things. So I buy uh, masks, although we don't have those, many of those on display at the moment, but there's a painting behind the camera that we picked up on our last trip to Cuba. Another one back here, two more back here. So I can see three paintings from Cuba and uh, we've got a great uh, digital photo frame with some of our favorite art and my photos in it as well. Um, yeah, so we normally buy, it's not famous or high value stuff, but just paintings mostly that we really like. Um, questions. Peter Sykes, where do you find all these exotic beers in the middle of this isolation period? That's a good question, but it's so easy in New York. Um, the Trappist and the Hitchachino, no, the Trappist was from Whole Foods and they deliver, so that was easy. Uh, same with the Le Chouf and the Delirium and a lot of great uh, Belgian beers, they have them. They do also have this Japanese nest beer as well, but we got this one and the Koshikari, Koshihikari, um, at the local Japanese grocery store, which um, has six beers and a couple of them are kind of exotic. Um, let's see. So what are people's wish to have cameras here? Thomas would go for an A7R4 with a 70 to 200 G Master. Um, okay, nice. Well, this is the slightly more affordable and much more pocketable version, not pocketable, but travelable, the A7R4 with the Tamron 70 to 180. You save about 1400 bucks going this route. Uh, the cat seemed to be behaving. That's true, Sean. I think uh, Tyson's asleep on the bed and Loki's asleep under the bed. So they'll probably get up a bit later. Um, anyone else? Matt lost some weight, it seems. It, you know, it's funny. People, I think it just depends when you last watched and maybe which how flattering or unflattering the camera angle was. In one day on one or two videos that were filmed, sometimes on the same day, I'll get comments in both directions. No offense, I tend to just ignore them now because you'll hear, wow, you've really gotten fat and wow, you're really looking great. All about the same thing. So, you know, it doesn't really mean much. Um, like MP monochrome, that's a nice choice. Um, did I ever test the Sony 100 STF lens? I think just at their event, but not in detail, no. Okay, one more question, and then we'll jump back. Um, oh, I'm not seeing any new ones, so I might have missed some, but keep sending them in, and let's take a look back at the questions. Sorry, at the pictures. Okay. Okay, so this one from Jess and Joe. Uh, I think they were one of our winners recently, so congrats and thanks for resubmitting. Um, hmm. It's a sweet moment. I do think for a couple type photo, it will be stronger to be in a lot tighter on them, so get rid of the extra headroom. Uh, and probably even get rid of some of the lower room. And I think this will benefit from a more beautiful time of day in terms of lighting. 
and a bit more careful editing. It's all kind of flat, there's no colors that pop, and being that distance away, it's difficult, but having a shallow depth of field to blur more of the background, unless that, it, that background is important, um, I feel like a bit better of an edit and maybe slightly better timing in terms of shooting it um, would have, you, you've got great potential there to explore further. Okay, this one from Johannes Malm. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it works. I think it's a great shot of the kids out riding. I think what makes this work is more the water and the splash than the reflection. The reflection to me doesn't really add a whole lot to the overall image. This one from Julia. Uh, just FYI, Julia, when we were doing our tests earlier today, this was the image I had on screen when I was testing different bit rates because there's a lot of detail in this file so that I could judge which was giving us the best results. Having said that, I'm not really sure what I'm looking at. <laughs> um, a mandarin and a glass, a bottle of water. It looks like a very healthy lunch in the park and a shaving mirror. So I love the tones. I, love, I really like the atmosphere of it. Um, I'm, you know, not that every image has to tell a story, but I'm not sure, I feel like there is a story there, but I'm not privy to it. This one from Justice. Thank you for submitting again. I recognize the name Justice from the last couple. Um, there's a trend now, right? With having just the occasional non-matching fingernail polish. Um, so here with her face and her reflected face both being the same distance from the camera, we do get both of them in nice sharp focus. So that I quite like. Um, I don't know, to be honest, I mean, I have nothing against a beautiful woman in lingerie and, you know, a sexy kind of a pose. I just don't feel that this really quite works. It's obviously there's kind of a busy background with the the bright light from the window. Um, I feel like all of the interest of the shot is kind of right in here. Like we don't really need to see her whole body and the fishnet stockings and stuff. Um, and I don't actually know if the reflection is adding so much. Um, I don't dislike it, but it doesn't quite work overall for me. Oof, okay. Uh, this one from Kent Squires, beautiful shot. Um, to see, uh, thinking back to Jess and Joe, look at the how the quality and the colors in this, this really pops. Now drop your married couple in there, forget that there's a mountain, but think about the, the color of the water and the color in the sky and you know the, the greens, how they've all been brought out with a bit of careful editing. There's a lot of oomph in a shot like this, a nice one, Kent. This one from Carl. Thank you for submitting this. I'm pretty sure he shot this on my Japan tour from last year. Must have been last year. It's a Japanese lantern reflected in water. And one of the few shots, it's a little abstract. If I hadn't been there, maybe I wouldn't know it. Um, but it's one of the few we've had where we're just getting the reflection and not the original source, so I like it for that sake. Let's go to more. Oh, and what is this one? KK Yobo. Um, so this was actually submitted by my wife, taken somewhere in, what? Oh, it's a secret. It, this was taken by someone um, uh, in Brooklyn. It looks like it's somewhere south of where we live. Beautiful colors, interesting leading lines, I can't help but notice how off-level the horizon is though, but it gets six extra bonus points for being from my wife. So, nice one. Thanks for entering. Uh, Lay Stevens, lovely shot. I wonder where you took this one. Um, I would love to see it if you were to go down a little bit lower, take a few steps forward and try and get rid of this grounding element you know so many it's kind of an 
It's always said that shots need a foreground, a middle ground, and a background. I don't know that that's really true. I think just having a start on the nice reflection would be enough here, but I like it. One more, and then questions. Oh, this is cool. From Lars. You know, the, the discordant feeling you get when you go through a city looking at the old buildings and the new buildings and the different styles of architecture is one of my favorite things when I'm exploring a city, whether it's my own city or uh, a new city. So here, having the older style building reflected in the boring gray granite panels, I think is quite a cool technique. And you've lined that up really beautifully. It almost looks like it's a, you know, a, a part of the design. Nice one. Let's go back to the single shot. Boom. I actually did a close-up cam. This is my Zoolander cam. Okay, that's enough. Uh, <laughs> back to the single shot, and I'll wait for the comments on that one. Um, let's take a look at some questions. What are you watching on Netflix? Uh, let's see. Oh, so we recently got into Kim's Convenience, which is kind of a easy to digest sitcom the kind of thing we haven't actually watched in years. It sounds weird, but it's a Netflix show, but I think it must be a TV show in Canada, filmed in Toronto. It's about a family who run a convenience store, and it it's kind of a show that we haven't watched something like that in so long. It's like the half hour, you know, good time, good family fun type show. We've lately just been watching like hardcore dramas, like we watched the two series of Kingdom, uh, Kate is catching up on Peaky Blinders at the moment. Uh, it's not Netflix, but on HBO, we started watching Succession as well. So Kim's is a, you know, if we just have 20 or 30 minutes to kill and just want something light, it always gives us a good chuckle, which um, is actually where I think she got the naming for her file Yobo from, if anyone watches Kim's Convenience. Ah, okay, uh, recommendations on digital photo frames. Um, okay, hi, he specifically said high res there. I don't have a general recommendation. I can tell you what I have and I really, really like it. And in full disclosure, I did have a, was it, I guess you still call it a commercial relationship. I gave one of their frames away in the past, but like most of these things, I use them like the product, and then a, a relationship developed, same with Black Rapid, um, is, oh, what's it called? What's my photo frame called there? Canvas. Um, it's beautiful. It's actually like 40 inches or something, but it's only 1080, which seems way too low. But the way the screen is finished, it's, um, no, no, it's okay, it's okay. Um, it really looks like a canvas and it's beautiful, the quality and you get access to their art collection. So you can have like a, today we're gonna have impressionist paintings and tomorrow French Renaissance paintings and tomorrow, the day after that, it's gonna be my photos from Africa and have them rotate. It's also got a sensor so you can just wave your hand to change the picture and an app and blah, 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 blah. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see, let's see. What's your favorite Belgian beer? Whew, that is a tough one. Um, I don't know that I've had one that I didn't like. Uh, I still think this, I'm pretty sure this is Belgian. Left Blonde, I think is my favorite. Now, Chris, why do you ask these kind of questions? When Steph was on, you asked a similar question to Steph of, what was something you thought was a good idea and turned out to fail? And now you're kind of asking me the same, what somewhere you thought would be a good place to go, but wasn't. Let's just focus on positive stuff. Um, <laughs> William Inbody, how did you get the cats or how did they get us? Quickly answer that one and then we can jump back into the pictures. Uh, so we found Loki five years ago, five years and a week, two weeks, she, she just had her birthday. Uh, no, maybe a week, it was around Easter. 
uh, someone had left her this big under a styrofoam box on our corner and it was like a 105 degree day and we found her and she nursed her back and then here she is now we flew with her to America and we adopted Tyson from New York um, two years ago coming on two years ago coming on three years ago two and a half years ago yeah yes okay okay let's just jump back in and take a look at these pictures again this one from manual I need to find a, a better way of doing this to have the screen even closer but not blocking me at the moment I got a big screen here and a big screen there but it's still the names are so small. Well, I guess I could look for the watermark, couldn't I? Um, I really like this shot, super wide angle. I don't think the reflection really adds much to it at all, but it does have one. And uh, I like the overall edit on it, so nicely done. Marcellano. That looks like the thingy thing in San Francisco, wherever it is. Um, I do like this. This kind of reminds me of some of the other ones, the one with the bridge that I was saying maybe would work as a wider one. Again, the, the full central composition. Um, you know, maybe something like this, doing it at a much slower shutter speed might introduce uh, an interesting thing if you got the water really flat. Um, yeah, the, the main thing I like about it actually is the timing in terms of the lighting and the nice color cunt color contrast we have going on there okay ye oldie from mark meyer um what's going on here it looks like it's got a heavy reverse vignette going on that's washing out all the blacks on the edge of frame i like the vibe i think you could lose the left 20 percent that would make it stronger and again the Really heavy central composition just kind of seems jarring to me. It almost looks like a um, an X-pan shot or something like that. Okay, so this is more of a reflecting on my life. And I think he's in the room, isn't he? Um, really nice skin tones. I would probably like to see the shoulder dropped and open the neckline up. Um... And if we're going for a reflective type feeling, I don't know. That's not exactly the vibe I get from her. Maybe positioning it more so you know, we don't need so much of her hair falling away in the darkness, but seeing that she's looking out the window, she's seeing a bit more of the window might give more of a sense of, you know, reflection. Here we go. So it looks like Mike got to this one after you did, Bill. Um, our first, second, third shot we had of a sim very similar bird here with some action. I think it could come in a little bit closer, but less distracting background. Um, yeah, I think that works pretty well. Ooh, this is tripping me out. Okay, so this is upside down. So we've got the reflection on the top. I like that. This is from Milan. Uh, if you're in the room, Milan, I'd love to hear the story behind this. It looks like after some kind of a natural disaster, flooding, and somebody just kayaking down a street. I like that. Now, this one from Naji. From my memory was this is a, not a poet. Well, it's a, it was an actual portrait shoot, but this wasn't staged that this young man had lost some of his friends or teammates recently. And this was a real moment of reflection. Um, so for that sake, I don't really want to critique it in a, a critical way. I'd probably like to see a little bit of his face, but I do get definitely the overall vibe from the shot, even without that description. This one from Oliver or Olivier. Yeah, I quite, quite like this. The the steely tones through the whole thing, I think, work really nicely. Um, I reckon just getting rid of from about here to the left out, and that would then put her over to the side, 
get rid of that clutter and then all of this side has that steely blue tone through it, I think could make it even stronger. Next time I'll do this in Lightroom again so it's easier for me to make these quick adjustments and show you if that's something you guys enjoy. Let's have a look at one more and we'll jump out. This one from Oscar. So this would obviously be, uh, so I like the square, circle, square, 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 circle, circle. There's a lot of um, that going on. But it would be stronger if we had a person other than, I guess this is you if we go right in. Yeah. Okay, so there are people there, but it, they're kind of too small. So if you had them here, or if you had them when they got right up to like here, so they were bigger, then that might work, you know, stronger. Let's switch back to the single shot. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, <laughs> so we are having, I heard a lot of dinging. So let's have a look at some questions here. Photorescent would like the EOS R with two or three lenses. Lovely choice. Um, first place you want to travel after this ends. I, oh, that's hard to say. It really depends how soon it ends because I have commitments to pick up, issue, you know, and which ones I can pick up will depend on when things calm down again. So right now I should be in Laos running a tour, but that's obviously off. Then May was meant to be Photokina, that's been cancelled, so so has that trip. And the periphery stuff that I was planning to do at that time, although I hear Germany is reopening on Monday. Um, my calendar's over there. I have several potential trips for this year. I mean, it would have been a trip every month pretty much. Uh, the next tour I have locked in though is the end of October to Ethiopia. And I really hope that can go ahead, but we're just going to have to see how everything plays out. Um, but not to dodge the question, I'm at the moment dying to go back to Japan and Hong Kong and Australia and Iceland and Italy, Portugal. <laughs> so there, there's a list. Um, William Inbody, what camera is on your hit list? Um, so if we're talking the the dream camera stuff again, um, it's really it's a it's a flight of fancy. I have such great equipment already, and my needs are met. It would just be a what would give me that punch in the gut feeling of oh, what a camera! Um, I'm quite dying to check out the Leica S3. Um, I, I'm on the list to get a loaner once they're available. I don't know how that's going to be delayed with what's going on. Um, if that had a more sophisticated autofocus system, it would be right on top of my bucket list of cameras. As it is, I'm really keen to check it out and see how it's advanced over the previous generation. Do I do much macro? I mean, yeah, I have. It's not something I do on a regular basis, but I have, and I've done some tutorials on it as well, so you can see that on the channel. Uh, the questions about uh, Marcus L. Um, oh, it just kind of gets me down to think about it, to be honest. How tempting are all these places usually filled with tourists that are now empty? Which place that's now empty would be great to go visit? Uh, you know, it, let's just think of it as a hypothetical in the same way of, you know, couldn't wouldn't it be nice to go back in time and dot, dot, dot. It's just... It's too hypothetical because the reason these places have no people means I shouldn't be there either. So, and more than that, whilst I would love to go to, I don't know, to Venice, whilst it's not swarmed with people, I don't want to fly in a plane right now, even if there's only six people on the plane. It's just, it's not worth it. I know ever, there's some people having different opinions on what's going on, but mine is young, old, healthy, unhealthy, 
people, you know, I think they say 10,000 people in New York have died from this COVID-19 now. That's I'm not messing around. You know, I'm not 18 and in the peak physical health. And even if you are, it's still not a joke. So it's, for, I've just kind of resigned myself that I'm at home for now. Um, one more question. I'll skip that one. Um, oh well, if you got some more questions, folks, send them in. Um, ah, Milan Medic is saying the upside down photo was taken in Thailand. It's a monk coming to a village on a river. Uh, it's good to know. Great. Yeah, I've seen uh, some of that in the past. Oh, I was meant to be in Thailand uh, when on the 22nd for two days of photography and catching up with friends and that's off as well. <laughs> okay, next next one's... Um, Brad N is asking, is this lacking 180 to 200 noticeable? I haven't gotten it out to do a proper shoot with her. I've literally taken photos of my cat so far, so I'm sorry, but I am working on a safe way to do a shoot to test it out properly. So it won't be too long until I can bring that to you, I hope. Let's have a look at some pictures. And this one from Peter Sykes and Pete. I just called you Pete. I'm pretty sure you go by Peter. Peter, I hope you're well. Um, I thought I saw you in the room. Um, nice shot. It's not one that I think uh, the reflection adds a whole lot. It's subtle, but I kind of like it. I'd probably throw that red pillow on the edge of frame out of the shot if I were taking it. Uh, it's probably her, this is more of a, a metaphorical reflection rather than the physical reflection that makes this one interesting. The book she's holding, the title of it, her, you know, gazing out the window, the look on her face, that all says personal reflection. Uh, Kirsten, Karsten Larson. So, first of all, thank you for entering this. We don't get enough entered shots of proper portraits of guys. Again, not a huge fan of the completely central composition. I think there's stepping out and having more of the lights. So having kind of putting him more on this kind of a plane but you taking a step to your right and having more of that corridor behind him, I think could be a more dramatic final shot. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm glad you didn't go too far on the editing. It's a nice start. This one from, oh, I can't even read that, Riffers. Uh, lovely tone, great atmosphere, we're getting the full eye, maybe brightened a little bit, the eye and the teeth a bit much, um, but I like it, nice one. How are we going for time? 6.53, not too bad. Yeah, hopefully next year Japan. Thank you for that, Yobo. Joke. Okay, Jesus. This one from Rob Burnage. That's a hell of a reflection. You know, I wonder if going higher, shooting down on the reflection, so most of what we're seeing is a reflection of that great vaulted ceiling and just kind of getting, so again, this is not really gonna work, but having the frame be something like we get that whole arch, but pointed more down so we get a really expansive view of the beautiful ceiling be our shot that brings the crucifixes bigger. I think that's kind of a, quite a strong composition already, but maybe with a slightly different vantage, it could be even more dramatic. Okay, now let's jump back out. Robert Popper, thank you for submitting, and I think maybe you're in the room as well. 
Is this actually a reflection? That's hard to tell. It doesn't really look like a reflection shot to me. It looks like two flowers. Um, I kind of like it. I don't think this is the best vantage point to show off the beauty of the flowers, but I do love the tones. And I think showing these kind of flowers in black and white is so, there's something so sensual about the petals. So I like that. So Robert's saying it's not a reflection. So why is it in a reflection <laughs> selection then? Um, one more and then we'll jump out to some questions. So please send them through. And Juan is just throwing me through dozens at the moment. So thank you for that. Um, okay, I feel the yellows and blues have been pumped a bit too far on saturation on this one. Um, nice colors. It is a strong working reflection. I don't see much of a, I don't think it's that strong of a subject, to be honest. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Am I missing something here? Um, I feel turn the blue and yellow saturation back to a realistic level and it's just kind of a waterway in the, maybe in the UK, I'm not sure. Um, maybe this is a kind of shot to spend some time, try ultra wide, try super telephoto and find what different compositions you can put together, stacking up the building and the clouds. You know, you do have the white and the overly yellow building are completely different types of architecture. Maybe there's something interesting there. Maybe coming around to your left and shooting across to that little bridge that's there. I think there must be some potential there, but I'm not getting it from this shot. Let's jump back out to questions. I hope you guys are enjoying my close-ups. I'm quite enjoying it. Um, Questions, questions, questions. And Hitchachino Nest. This is a white ale. Let's just read it. Um, where is it actually from? Well, it just says product of Japan. A wheat beer with coriander, orange peel, and nutmeg. A refreshing beer with spicy notes, a soft flavor, mild acidity, produced by wheat malt. Well, thank you very much. And it's got a cute little owl as its mascot. Uh, Thomas, I think this may be a question from you directly, thinking about your application of this lens. Um, I can't say that I have tested the video autofocus with the human subject in any meaningful way yet, but I can say when uh, Jonathan and I were at WPPI in Vegas. I got hands on with one, did a video from the show floor doing stills video uh, with a model there, and it was focusing really well. None of that you sometimes get with non native glass. The eye autofocus was working a treat. Uh, checking the files afterwards, it was really, really accurate. Um, quite sincerely, if this performs as well in the field as I felt it did on the show floor. I'm gonna buy this for myself to travel with. It seems, you know, for less than half the price and half the weight, a great, great option. Well, Christoph is waiting for my close-ups in 4K. So good news, this is going out in 4K. So in about an hour after this finishes, once YouTube has a chance to process it, you can come back and rewatch it and see all of this beauty in 4K. So just make a little note on some pen and paper of the timestamps and you have yourself a hell of a Friday night, my friend. Um, Jason is asking, am I able to show the way I live stream? I won't go through all of that now. It might be a good topic for a future video, but if you check out the My Gear page, it should all be there. And I think actually in the description of this video is a link to the gear we're using at least. Um, how else could I do it? I could do it like this, where's my phone? If you guys are following me on Instagram, let me just take a photo and share it to my story. I'll do it actually, a little video. 
Hi Instagram, I am currently live on YouTube. Hopefully this won't blow up the internet. People wanted to see what my live streaming setup is, so this is it. There you go. Go have a look on Instagram after this is done. I'll post it then. So, have I considered some Voigtlander glass for my Leica from William? I, I have, excuse me one second whilst I blow my nose. I have, and there's a couple of lenses there that I really like. I wasn't sure if I wanted to go that route because what's most spectacular image quality wise of a Leica is the glass more than the sensor. The user experience is both, but the image quality, it's more the glass. So it kind of makes more sense to me to use, if you want a great look, to get something like an A7R4 and put like a glass on it than to get a Leica body and put cheaper glass on it. But having said that, I have got, you know, a, what's it called? Oh, I forget the name now, but a, a small, a Miyazaki, is that it? MS Optics uh, F1.1 lens for it. That is way far, a long way from perfect. Um, and I really enjoy that one. And the Voigtlander 10 mil, I really like that as well. So. Maybe, let's see, once I get out and I'm able to shoot more. Okay, last one. And then we'll go back. And as one said, please give this a thumbs up if you're enjoying it. We've got a few hundred people in the room so far and only 39 likes. What's up with that? Uh... So there's a couple there that I might circle back to on the, the next round of questions. So thanks for those who have sent them in, keep sending them in. And let's take a look back at our pictures. Oh, wow. This one from Razad. Wow. Um, Kind of feels so. It it's, this is quite cinematic, actually. It's intense. I do think maybe it just needs it to be increased in exposure about half a stop. Um, it's kind of hard for me to tell if it's really in focus here. Um, but yeah, I think if it were just increased a little bit in exposure it would already be more powerful, but I, I like it, it's striking. Okay, the prize for the tiniest picture entered goes to Samantha. Um, ah, so we actually had a conversation, Samantha. Thank you for submitting this. She's a new photographer. She's not sure on how to export pictures at different uh, resolutions. So I actually sent her one of my videos from like seven years ago where I covered that topic, so hopefully that's of some use to you. Um, I can see what you saw in the moment. Um, it's a beautiful scene, it looks like you're at a golf course or something. So when you go back and you see a scene like this again, just try a few different vantage points, getting lower to the ground, trying some different zoom settings, and just see what different ways you can put the different elements together to create different images. This is a great start and definitely a beautiful scene. So thanks for getting involved. Scott Easterly. Nice to see your images, Scott. I met Scott in Chicago. When was that, last year? Oh, there's a poodle out the window trying to fight a Labrador. Cute. Um, and he's now a new father. He and his wife had a, a kid recently, so congratulations. Good to see you're still shooting. Um, this is another one I think could do with a boost in exposure. So here where it's almost, I mean, the, you've shot the reflection, she's blurred out in the foreground. It's so, you know, we almost don't notice that it's a reflection if it weren't for the little blurred out part on the right hand side of the shot. Uh, but I think it works nicely. I think we could probably get rid of a little bit of that lefter frame, having the brightest part be right near her face when it's a little underexposed. 
kind of pulls away from her. Uh, but yeah, nice one. Please do keep sending in your questions. I think we're doing fairly well time-wise. Okay, so I mentioned before about the, sorry, I've forgotten the photographer's name, but the cotton wool, the steel wool shot. Um, and with things like that, or water drop shots that have been so much, you need something to elevate it. And this is a seriously classy water drop shot. I don't think I could do this uh, without putting in a lot of time to work on it. Um, if at all. It's a really, really nice shot. And I think the color separation you've got here, the warms and the cools, the oranges and the greens, really takes it to the next level. Um, it's beautiful. Again, I'm not a huge fan of the fully central composition, but in this kind of a case with, you know, when it's got that Hadouken of uh, mushroom going on top and bottom, it kind of does work. But I still think maybe just bringing the bottom up a little bit, the top it seems cleaner overall. Um, so having a bit more space at the top than the bottom might help a little bit, but beautiful work. Simon, mm, now that's a name that I saw a lot in the past and haven't seen so much lately, so thanks for submitting. Similar kind of vibe to the earlier one we had. Um, I like it. It looks like it's shot in like a bus shelter or something. Um, I think maybe just work on her pose a little bit. It does feel a little uh, forced. Um, but overall, I like it. I think there's a, there's great potential there. And this also feels kind of like a, a scene from a science fiction movie. Like, what's that one that had Scarlett Johansson where she could access her whole mental capacity? Lucy, kind of reminds me of Lucy. Uh, let's jump back out and have a look for some more questions. Uh, da -da -da -da. <laughs> Thank you, Juan, for doing such a great job, and Thomas and Yobo for helping out with the moderation. I really appreciate that. Um, Salt is another good one. That's the Angelina Jolie one. Um, so Simon is saying his is a Kyoto temple. Um, I think that's probably still coming. But that says Simon Ng. Unless something's gone wrong and it's showing me the wrong file names. Um... Ah, Cajoling Technologies. That's kind of a funny name, Cajoling. Uh, what watch are you wearing? I'm an Oris fan myself. I don't actually know Oris. What's, um, what's their story? I am, what's the right way to put this? I'm a watch lover and enthusiast, but not really a watch owner just yet. It's, um, I, I think I could see myself when I turn 50 having a collection of 100, but right now I don't at all. Uh, this one, I love this, and if you happen to be watching uh, Sring, big up, thank you for the tip. Um, this is like the, <laughs> you know that I assume not great movie, Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. This watch has kind of spread among my traveling friends, so uh, my good friend, really dear friend, Sring, who's my local guide in Bhutan, he's another guy like me that he works with who's uh, from uh, Paris, had this watch. Sring saw it and loved it, so he got one. I saw it and loved it, so I got one. And now, like, four or five of my different tour guests have gone and bought one as well, having seen my one. And they just keep spreading like that. And no commission, no nothing like that. I just think it's a really cool watch. This is a Tissot T-Touch Solar Expert. Let's see if I can... Oh, I have a close-up shot. That's what this is made for. Close-up. Boom. Can you see that? Um, so on the face... Oh, I probably have to hide my face. Is this going to work? Uh, there we go. Um, 
This is the whole face is a solar panel. What it's showing you right now is altitude, although I haven't calibrated it in so long. But then when you like tap it, then oh, the whole face is also a touch screen. So you tap over here and so that means you want it to do that function or over here to do that, over here, where that is altimeter. It's got a couple of different time zones and stuff. And yeah, so it's all solar powered. So, and it's really rugged. So I like it and it's great for travel. Have time zones, know your altitude and all of that kind of thing. It's, yeah, it's just kind of nerdy, but it's neat. Um, oh, let's get off the close up. Uh, Sean, how is the white ale? Good. This is not a new one for me. I really like the Hitchichino. Um, of all the different ones, I prefer the, the wheat ale, the wheat beer. Oh, so many. Nerd zombie. Um, on your cross country trip with your dad, was there a shot that got away that still haunts you? Well, when I said so many, there's so many shots generally that have gotten away that haunt me, yes. Um, on that particular trip, not really. There was a couple that I wish we could have gone and done something that I thought had potential for a shot, but not really shots that, you know, I saw it, but then I wasn't able to capture it. It was, in a way, kind of a rush because we were covering a lot of ground and I was doing all the driving. But in another way, I was shooting with two Leicas and when I would stop, it was just me. There was no one around. Dad might step out to grab a shot or two as well, but if I wanted 10 minutes to try and get a shot of a tree with a mountain in the background, then I could just take it, you know. So it wasn't action-packed type stuff and the... Uh, the old Americana vibe that I was going for, I got, and I loved the book that I made on that trip. Oh, if you guys didn't see it, I actually did a video recently with Sal Digital that's giving away a $60 voucher to anyone who wants it to make a photo book. I made one of my time with my dad, and I love that book. I sent him a copy as well. We, it's a great keepsake for both of us. Let's go one more question. Uh, GTM photo, how's the embroidery on your Black Rapid Strap custom going? Is it holding up well? Um, I'll tell you now, it's really difficult to do and I don't know that I would recommend it. It's holding up fine, it hasn't damaged the strap, it, you know, it, it hasn't fallen apart or anything, like the stitching, but the Black Rapid Straps are so dense, it, the, the, embroidery company spent like a day and I think destroyed a bunch of needles trying to do that for me. So my plan had originally been to do 30 straps or something like that. And in the end, I could only get the one done and it was imperfect, but I just kept it for myself as a nice little piece of branding. And my lovely wife has just brought it to me. Thank you. So that's what I had done. Let's again go to the close-up. I just had my logo put on there, but you can see it's not perfect and the amount of time that it took and the amount of damage it did, I don't know that you could really do it sustainably. The ideal way would be to unstitch everything, just do the outer part and then put it back together. But realistically, you wanna do it before the thing is manufactured and I don't know that it's really worth it. It'd be easy to just put your logo or something on your t-shirt and leave your strap as it is because you want that to you know, reliably hold your camera so you don't want to damage the integrity of it. Um, okay. I think that will do it for now. Let's jump back into the shots. Now, this is, what, what is going on here? Because I definitely saw a shot of Simon has described there of the temple, but it's not actually here. Have I done 50? It doesn't feel like I have. 
This is saying that this is the last one. And I was sure I had one of the um, the Kyoto Temple, so I don't know what's going on with the naming there, sorry. This one from Thomas. I, I like, I really like the, the technique. It's nice and creative to shoot on the roof of a car like that. It takes a little second to see what's going on. Um, I just don't know that there's enough there. Maybe if you were able to do it without damaging the car to have it be a slightly longer exposure, so you've got that, is it a Mercedes, actually come through and do a little streak in the foreground, that might lift it to be, you know, something a bit more dynamic. Um, so let me just double check here. That's so strange. I, if Simon's saying that that isn't his photo, I absolutely did not rename any. That was the whole point. It's saying that I have 50 of 50 here that I have looked at. And as I scroll up, yes, I think I looked at all of these. So I'm not sure what went on. But anyway, this wasn't a competition. It was a, a chance for us to all submit stuff and share. Having said that, we made great time. So I haven't chosen a theme for next week's uh, topic. So if you guys want to suggest some, then please let me know and we'll choose it together now. Um, White Lion, can you describe the taste of that beer, please? Mm. It, it is quite similar to most white beers. Um, but it does, you know, I read the description, but it does taste like it's kind of got more herbs and spices going on there than a lot of them. I wouldn't be able to necessarily pick out coriander and all of that, the stuff that it said, but it does taste quite light, quite crisp. Um, it's not sour at all. I like it. Um... Do you like Duvel? Yeah, I quite like it. It's very nice. You know, I'm not that big of a beer drinker. I do like the different beers, but I would say I prefer wine to beer. Uh, someone's about to buy their first full frame camera. Congrats, enjoy. Uh, black and white, cats. Beer product shots, that's kind of fun. Let's see. Um, uh, have I ever thought about a Galapagos Islands trip? I have, and I have some contacts there actually. Um, it can be quite expensive to do a tour there, and if you want to do it right, you're competing against some big companies who've been doing it a long time. So I would want to go a few times and make sure that I make the right connections and get the, the right places to go that, you know, I can provide some real value to people. Um, so certainly somewhere that's on my list, no doubt. It's meant to be one of the most remarkable places for marine life. Gear is saying IPA forever, or for Iwa. I don't get the appeal of IPA. Um, someone please educate me. Butch Bauman, are you planning another tour in Southern Africa? Well, it's not exactly Southern, but we are planning a trip for Ethiopia in the end of October. I would really like to get back to Namibia in 2021, assuming everything is back on track. <laughs> I was thinking about a topic being something like uh, a shot that you took a few years ago but have just gone and done a re-edit on. So, you know, in this transition period where people are indoors, I at least have been going through my archives of images. So that looks like it could be a, a nice one, like go back and found a photo from a trip you took 10 years ago or two years ago and re-edit it this week to submit. Um, huh. Uh, cajoling, how about pictures of watches to help Matt pick his 50th birthday gift? Well, 
I'm only just turned 40, despite the baldness. Um, I was more saying that I have kind of a compulsive personality. I am a little worried, although I don't have a lot of other vices. I don't have a car, I don't have children or a lot of these financial commitments. I do kind of worry that if I go in, oh, Tyson's up, hey darling. If I start collecting watches, it'll get out of hand really quickly, especially because the one that I have top of my list that I really want, that I've found a great one, is already kind of a grail of a watch. Uh, the only way then is down because I can't afford to keep ratcheting up from that point. Um, kind of reminds me when Kate and I were first married, we were into fine dining and we started going to, okay, so for this birthday we're going here and then for the next person's birthday a little bit higher and for an anniversary a bit higher. And after like two years of marriage, we'd been to the best restaurant in Australia and just about broke our, you know, broke the budget for the month and we had to reset at 10% of the budget and start to work our way back up again. So I'm thinking maybe I need to start out with like a $20 watch and then <laughs> over the next 10 years work my way up to the one that I actually really want now. If I had the self-control to just get the one, then I could get it and be done, but um, I don't think I can. Um... Someone saying, am I wearing shorts? Nope, I'm wearing full trousers. Um, White Lion, can we see your pets? Uh, check my Instagram, there's lots of them there. Loki is still asleep. I could go get her, but then I'm off camera for 30 seconds and she's sleeping, so that's kind of a dick move. And Tyson is currently on my wife's desk eating cat grass. But don't bring her over. If we bring her over, she's gonna freak out and she'll just end up knocking my beer everywhere. Um, Panerai, you know, and someone's saying I should get a Panerai. I do like that. Oh, here we go, Breitling, da da da. Um, the, you know, I never really dug on Panerai or Breitling. Uh, Seiko, one of my, 12 wish I could have watches right now is a Grand Seiko. It's the Snowflake Edition if you're into that. Um, someone saying empty city photography for our next theme. I'm not gonna make that the theme. I'm not encouraging people to go out and shoot at this time. Um, I could do a wine review channel, I could, but I have enough on <laughs> and I barely post to my seafood one already. Um, what else? Someone's saying 40 question mark. I assume that means because I look so much younger than 40. Yes, thank you. Um, <laughs> yes. Robert Popper saying Patek or Rolex are always an investment. I don't know about that. For me, uh, an investment is revenue generating. You could say, I would say that probably, broadly speaking, Rolex and Patek for watches are, in my limited experience, I'm not an expert, the two brands most likely to hold their value, broadly speaking. Right now, it's probably like Richard Mille or something. Um, but it depends on the model. And one of the ones I want right now is kind of hot. I'm quite lucky that the really hot watches right now are not things that actually grab me. So I'm not, you know, rushing out to buy a, a Hulk or something like that. This has turned into a watch conversation. Here we are. I hope, <laughs> how are the numbers? Oh, the numbers are up. So great. <laughs> um, what about you guys? So it sounds like there's a few watch guys in the audience. Uh, it is something that I'm really interested in and it's the, the mechanical aspect of it in the same way that I appreciate using my old 503CW. I'm thinking in the same way that I do some food videos and I label them as such, I might do some watch videos in the future. It's 
it'll be on top of the camera so people who aren't interested just don't have to click on it um, but you know I think it could be fun Yeah, Robert, you're guessing right, but probably you don't, you haven't guessed the particular one that I'm thinking. What are you laughing at, Kate? Oh, are you chatting to someone? Oh, I just heard her whisper, yes, I guess she's on like a, one of those automated calls. Ah, there we go, make time the next theme. Um, uh, let me have a little think about it. Yeah, Charles, appreciate nice watches, but no desire to have something that expensive on my person. I guess that's that's actually an important consideration, right? If you, it's crazy to think that you could have something worth as much as a car on your hand, but I guess women with jewelry do that all the time, but I, I wouldn't feel comfortable either. silverware inside your house yeah there's some good themes there i might just have a little think about it and hi tyson and we'll circle back to it christopher i totally agree the skeleton watches are so pretty back in the day i had like a i don't know a 50 dollar, 80 dollar swatch watch that was a, an automatic you know that was you know self-powered that was fully skeletonized and, you know, all stainless steel, I think. It was so pretty. I really love it. I actually was looking this week on Amazon to see if I could find a used one, but I can't find the same model anymore. Um, William Inbody, Leica L2. Which is the L2? I'm not sure if I know that one. Yeah, so that's maybe that's actually a great theme. People are pointing out time is a good topic because we have a lot of it at the moment. Um, yeah, so let's do that. Let's make the theme time, but that doesn't mean I'm going to award the prize to someone who has the fanciest watch. So it can be about aging or about passing time or someone filling in time or whatever, or a time, a time lapse won't work, but a long exposure could uh, be put into time. Um, or even if you have a shot that is very clearly taken at a certain time, like it was an early morning shot clearly, or a nighttime shot or whatever. So let's make next week's theme time, and let's just see, I might even have a sponsor on board or a prize that I can give away for it. So time, see you next week at this same Time. You see what I did there? Um, any thoughts on a new Sir Clicks a lot this year? Not really. I think I've still got on loan from KEH the D700, and I think that's a really great and fitting Sir Clicks a lot to move forward. So I think I'll stick with that for now. Hmm. Funny you say that, um, William. Sorry, I didn't know the L2 was a watch, but when I was at Wetzlar for the launch of the SL2, I got a book on Leica watches, and it's just over there, so I'll check it out. Um, <laughs> Charles Reese, the winner gets a watch. I tell you what, you know, I started doing seafood videos in the vain hope that that would mean I would get to go to great restaurants and maybe get comped meals. That hasn't really happened, but I have gotten tables at two or three restaurants that I wouldn't have got otherwise. And no, I have gotten a couple of comped meals as well. I always disclose it though. But the idea of doing some videos talking about watches and then being able to maybe not get free watches, but to be able to give away watches or to be able to uh, get discounts on watches, that, that does sound pretty cool. Um, but I'll tell you 169 people who are in the room right now, I most likely will put, if I do some watch videos, I'll put them on the same channel. In the past, I've tried to separate things out, but 
it never does that well. I think if I just clearly brand that it's a video about watches, it's a video about cameras, it's a video about travel, it's a video about cooking because I'm stuck at home during quarantine. If you're interested, you'll watch it. If you don't, you won't. But having it on a bigger channel works better than starting a brand new channel and not having the audience to even consider it. So, yeah. Um, Cuckoo Clock, yeah, that's a good one. If you take a look at Jacob & Co, who uh, I think they're Swiss, but they their main office is in New York. Some of the wristwatches they make are basically giant cuckoo clocks. They just made a, what was it? Um, who makes the W16 engine? Yeah, the, 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 it was the first one that had a thousand horsepower. Anyway, Bugatti, they made a Bugatti engine watch. You gotta check it, it's crazy. Um, Tic Tac watches, I don't know what that means. Huh, anyway, um, last couple of questions. David Fowler, how fast can you down a pint? These days, not. I, I don't want to find out. I used to be part of the boat race team at college, though. Um, a good company to use for backdrops on budgets. The only one I know that is, I think, excellent value, but maybe not as budget as you want, are these ones, gravity backdrops. You can get paper ones, but they crinkle. If you want a hand-painted fabric one, I don't think there's a better value one than gravity. Um... Someone saying thoughts on cloud backups like Backblaze. I use Backblaze. The only difficulty is if you're using multiple machines, but I find it really good. Um, what do you think? We might just about wrap it up there. I feel like it's kind of going on. How long until, is dinner coming at eight or 8.30 or? She's at eight. Uh, okay, so we'll keep going for another. If the numbers really dip, I'll know people are bored. Otherwise, we'll keep going a little bit longer. Um, <laughs> 101 blog just had a sleep because my voice is so restful. That's just because you're old and it's like two in the morning and you should be asleep. So go sleep, old man. Um, do I have a car and what kind? Nope. Uh, is it a Holden? <laughs> uh, no, I haven't had a Holden for a while, but my family are are or were Holden drivers. Uh, no, I live in New York now, so there's not a whole lot of Holdens over here. Um, but being in New York, there's no need to have a car. I probably can't afford a car park, let alone a car. Uh, so no, we back, the last car I owned was a 350Z in Sydney when I was back there. And before that, I restored a 260Z with my father. See you later, William. Do I have expired film in the fridge? Maybe I have film, could have expired. Um, uh, Matt Granger, can you make a taxes course, filing and keeping track of stuff, what's allowed? No, sorry, <laughs> I'm not a tax expert and it varies by state in, this, in America, I think, let alone by country. So no, that's not my field. Um, I could maybe make a video about how to choose a good accountant. Um, hey, is that the Terrier? If so, nice to see you, buddy. Um, thoughts on the Breitling Navimeter? Uh, have one just laying around, never using it. Um, I don't know what that is, sorry. Like I said, I'm not a watch expert. I'm a enthusiast, but I don't know a lot. Um, do 
Jonathan Colton, will you show us your favorite Japan photos? That's a great idea. And yes, um, I actually have a video coming. Let me just see if I have uh, some here. Sorry, this will be a bit impersonal whilst I look at some photos. I'm not sure if they're on this machine. Uh, let's see, where would they be? Hmm. They may not be on this machine, but I'll just have a quick look because I have my um, NAS and everything unplugged. Maybe I don't, sorry. Uh, uh, terrible. I can give you a cheeky little preview on something though which is some stills from a video I have coming in Japan. Oh, let me just see, does this actually work? Yeah, so this is part of a draft of an upcoming video that I've got to share with you guys, but I'll make sure the audio is off. And let's see, can I play this through? Pretty sure at the end of this draft, I had a few pictures included. I'm wearing a black wrapper there, by the way. So, now you see the older lady in the corner there. Ah, this was an amazing evening. I'll get this one polished up and hopefully out to you guys before too long. The comments have all stopped. I hope it's still uh, working okay. Did that all go through? I hope so. Um, someone saying, have I had fugu? Yes, I have. Not on that trip or that day, but I have in the past. It's boring, to be honest. Um, I think that might be about us done. We're out of time. Well, we're not out of time, but we've chosen our theme for next month as next week as being time. Uh, we've established there's two or three very talkative watch enthusiasts in the room and a, a lot of polite people who maybe aren't. Um, if anyone else has a last question, please send it through. Otherwise, we will start to wrap this up. Big thanks to Thomas and Juan and Yobo for helping out with all of the questions. Um, uh, Jonathan, talk about your Geisha documentary too. Well, you just have to watch the video when it comes. I, what I can tell you at this point was it was probably my favorite photo project I've shot for myself in about three or four years that it took five or six years to plan and set up that I'm going to split it into two, at least two different videos at this point, because there's just, uh, I was tossing up, do I do one really long one, two shorter ones? I feel like this is the way to do it without rushing it too much, but also not being too indulgent. Uh, and that it's not something I think about now, but when I rewind to the time, it was horrifically expensive to do, but I'm so glad that I did it. Um, so hopefully I'll have part one of that out this month, maybe next week even. Um, okay, I think that's, that's that. So thank you folks. Head on over to the live page if that's not where you are now. I'll update it as soon as I get off to make our theme for next week to be time. I'll do my best to have some content next week that can tie into the theme somehow. Um, Don, nice to see you. I didn't know you were in the room. 
Um, yeah, and stay well. Do you do what you can? It's a difficult time, but I really appreciate you guys all coming out to chat on a Friday evening. Um, have a great weekend, although probably for a lot of you like me here, weekend or weekday, it doesn't really make much of a difference at the moment. It's nice to have a little bit of a routine. So cheers guys, and I'll see you on Monday for our Q&A, and I will welcome gear questions on that one. And I might even get Steph back again, so we'll see you then. Thanks guys. And bye.